Hi and welcome to week 9 in our series going through the book of Galatians. My name is Elizabeth. I'm involved in our Croydon plant as an everyday church and it's a joy and an honour to lead you in this devotion today. At the moment we are in chapter 4 and we'll pick up from verse 21 going through to verse 31 and before you listen any further to this devotion I'll just encourage you to pause this recording pick up your bible and read it for yourself before we together look at one aspect of what uh, Paul is telling us here. This story that you've hopefully now read this story about Abraham, Sarah, Hagar, Isaac and Ishmael this story might be new to some of you, but it wasn't new to the Galatians. However, what is new or was new to them was the way that Paul used this story. The Galatians, they thought they knew the moral of the story, that the Israelites, that the Jews, they were all descendant of the promised child, Isaac. But here Paul turns this story around by saying that Hagar, the Egyptian slave woman, she represents the covenant of the law that Moses received from God on Mount Sinai. The law that the Jews were so passionate about and which is now what the Judaizers are saying, are telling the Galatians that they need to return to. And here comes Paul and says that anyone that does that, anyone that does return to the law and again relies on law keeping will be like Abraham when he took the things into his own hands and had a child with Hagar and that they will be just as much slaves as Hagar and Ishmael. And then he goes on to say that Sarah on the other hand she represents a different covenant. The covenant that Paul refers to here is a covenant that goes back further than the one from Mount Sinai and this covenant is a covenant that we call the Abrahamic covenant. We can read about this the way this covenant was sealed in Genesis 15 and I have just I've always loved the way that this covenant was sealed. Of all things it was sealed while Abraham slept. In any covenant between two parts, both parts will be involved. We can hear in the covenant from Mount Sinai, we can hear the Israel, they seal their part of the covenant with the words, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Words that uh, we know that it didn't take long for them to fail keeping. Uh, but here in, in the covenant with Abraham, only God sealed it. Abraham couldn't. He slept through it. You see, the, co the Abrahamic covenant is an unconditional covenant. The responsibility to fulfill that covenant rests entirely on God. And just as Paul says that, just as anyone who relies on the law and find, will find themselves being slaves like Hagar and Ismail, anyone who relies on God and his grace will be children of the promise, just like Isaac. Isaac was a result of God's promise, while Ishmael was a result of Abraham and Sarah trying to help God out, doing it their way. And how easily can't we fall into the same trap? How easily don't we take things into our hands? It might even be things that we have already given to God, certain area of our lives where we have already given God the control, said to God that, God, we just want your way. We want you to have control in this area. But then just like Abraham, we come to a place in our life where, where we just can't see how God is working or, or maybe even that he is working at all. And we end up taking control back again. Abraham did believe God when, when God said that he would have a son, but then it just took too long for that promise to be fulfilled. And in the meantime, Abraham took, um, took things into his own hands, somehow figured that God could need his help in fulfilling the promise. And that's how Ishmael came to be. But that was not God's plan, was it? And I'm thinking, 
that if we look at our lives, most of us, maybe even all of us, we will see that there are times where we have done similar. Stop trusting God and tried to sort things out ourselves instead. And how can I say that I think most of us would recognize ourselves in Abraham? Because that is the human way to do it ourselves. If you listen to my sermon from this week, you'll have heard me telling a story from when I was a school evangelist and we would get the kids to create their own religion as an illustration of how upside Christianity is. In creating this new religion without fault, in every single school we would go to, the kids would come up with things that we have to do to have a relationship with God. And that is where we would explain that Christianity is so upside down to any human thought pattern. With Christianity, we are not the acting figures God is. Christianity is not about what we can do or what we have done, but it's all about what he has done. And this task of creating a religion would often be an eye opener for them to see that Only God could come up with the idea of him doing it all. No human thinks like that. The natural thing for us is to think that we have to do it. That is the way that we are wired up. Human attempt is easier for us to grasp than grace is. And maybe that is why we keep falling back into that trap of doing it ourselves. So how do we avoid falling into the same trap as Abraham did? By constantly constantly reminding ourselves about who God is, about his faithfulness and greatness. By reminding ourselves of his promises, knowing that we can trust him to keep his word. By reminding ourselves of the things that he has already done in our lives, situations where we have clearly seen his faithfulness. But I think there is also another key to this hidden in the passage from today. Look at the last part from verse 21, where it says, Just as Ishmael, the child born by human effort, persecuted Isaac, the child born by the power of the Spirit. I pointed this out in my talk as well, but I'll point it out again. In the earlier verses, Paul is talking about one child born by the human effort and one child born by the promise. But here, the one according to the promise is described as a child born by the power of the spirit. The difference you see between Ishmael types and Isaac type is the work of the spirit. And this is key, learning to live our lives filled by and led by the Holy Spirit in us. Living in that constant flow of the Spirit. In any decision we take, ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. If Abraham had just asked God, been seeking God before making that decision to have a child with Hagar, learning to every day and throughout every day, Pray the prayer. Fill me with more of your Holy Spirit. Lead me, guide me, show me which direction I should go. Direct my my steps, speak to me and help me to listen. Let me live in the flow of your Spirit, Jesus, just as you promised. Whoever believes in you, rivers of living water will flow from within them. We are the children of the promise, which Paul so clearly tells us here. The ones born by the Spirit. And our lives should flow out from this, built on the foundation of grace and trust and moved by his Spirit in us. And there, God, I uh, thank you. I thank you, Father, that that, uh, you live in us with your Spirit. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will truly lead us and guide us every day. And that we will, oh, that we will be able to, yeah, Father, that you will 
teach us how to trust in you, to trust in you completely, that you will reveal areas of our life to us where we, where we really need to give you that control. Maybe it is areas where we have done that, but later on taking it back. And I pray that you will search us, look, look inside of us and reveal to us if there are areas in our, in our lives where we, where we don't trust you fully or where we're holding on to the control ourselves, trying to fix it and do it in our own strength as Abraham did with Hagar. And I pray, Father, that you will help us to fully surrender our whole life completely to you and trust you fully, trust your promises and rely on you for everything, that we will live as those children of the promise, the ones born by the Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.